through 19. So anyhow, looking, looking forward to that. Praise God. Well, the Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Let's everybody stand, if you would, one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, okay. Oh, let's, let's go into the word of the Lord. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 4. I do want you to sing another one, but I want you to hold it to the end of after the preaching. <laughs> but this is a little different. This is a little different today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1. And I, um, I want you to turn, after you found Ephesians 4 and 1, I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians 12 and just hold your finger over there. Matter of fact, hold your finger over there for the entirety of my sermon. Because I'm going to jump back over there in a little bit. I've got a lot of scripture to read today. But Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 1. If you found it, say amen. If you're still looking, say oh me. I got a few oh me's there. All right. Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 1. I actually had it on the overhead and then walked off and left my laptop behind or my tablet behind. So you got to do things the old-fashioned way. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. And that word vocation means calling. Worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing. And that forbearing means to hold up, to sustain or to lift one another in love. Everybody say, I need to hold up my brother. I need to sustain my brother. I need to lift my brother. One another in love. Verse 3, endeavoring. And that word endeavoring in the Greek means laboring, working hard, giving effort to, giving diligence to. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body. One spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God and Father of all. Who is above all. Through all. And in you all. And then down to verse number 11. Verse 11 says. And he that's God gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some evangelists. Some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the, of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature and fullness of Christ. So he said in verse 3, endeavoring or working or laboring to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the bond of peace. Verse 13 says. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Work to keep the unity of the spirit. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Can I teach you a little bit today? Can you hear it? Can you receive it? You want to hear the word of the Lord? Praise God. I want to speak to you on this subject for a little while today. The hard work of unity. The hard work of unity. Praise God. Let's everybody lift our hands and voices one more time unto the Lord and ask for his blessings on his word. Praise God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We need your presence, God. We need your presence, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for having stood as long as you did. Did y'all get a workout today? Amen, amen. There is, and Paul spoke of this in Ephesians, there is a unity of the Spirit. He spoke of it in verse 3. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. And there is a unity of the faith in Ephesians 4 and 13. He said, till we all come in the unity of the faith. 
Unity of the Spirit refers to a unity of purpose, a unity of mind, a unity of goals. We all should want ultimately the same thing, right? Don't we all ultimately, I hope we all ultimately want to go to heaven and we want to take as many people as we can with us, right? And, you know, back when I was, when I was pastoring in the UPC, sometimes people would say to me, well, you go different parts of the country and different churches have different standards and different ideas. And, and they, they would, I've had people tell me before that it appeared that, they, that the churches were not unified, that they were fractured in some way because of that. And I explained to them, we all agreed on ultimately on what we were trying to accomplish even when it came to subjects and questions like holiness and godliness and things of that nature, we all want to be more like Jesus, right? And we, we, had, we had differences of opinions about how to get there. We had differences of opinions about how to teach certain things and how to present certain things and how to, to, uh, you know, to best help people to get from point A to point B. But when it was all said and done at the end of the day, we were almost unanimous in agreement that we all wanted to get to point B. We all wanted, we had a, we had a goal in mind. So we were united in our purpose. We were united in our, our minds and we were united in our goals even though we weren't always united in our methods. We were not always united in, in our presentation. And... Then there's, so that's unity of spirit. And then there's unity of faith. And unity of faith in this context here in Ephesians, Paul is referring to an absolute unity of understanding and a unity of concepts, a unity of methods, a unity of doctrine. Now, we don't all have, nor I doubt until we get to the other side, will we ever have absolute 100% unity of understanding. Because there's always going to be people that know more than I know, and there's always going to be people that know more than you know, and there's always going to be people that have a different understanding than, than you have that I have. That, that, is, that is the way it is. Amen. But in spite of that fact, we can be unified in spirit. We can be unified. And Paul said, you've got to work at it. You've got to endeavor to do it because it's not always easy to achieve. And the, the Bible tells us that, that unity is a, a beautiful thing. In Psalm 133, the, the writer said, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. The Bible is clear that God wants His people to be unified. He is, it is clear that He doesn't want us to be divided. He is clear that He wants us to be together. But in spite of the beauty of unity, and in spite of the fact that it's God's will for us to be unified, and in spite of the fact that it's God's will for us to, to not be divided, we have to work at it because it doesn't always come easily. And sometimes, folks, we can think that we are unified when in fact we are not. Sometimes we can come to church and uh, we can uh, uh, imagine to ourselves that, that, that we are unified in our worship when the reality is somebody's mind is over here and somebody else's mind is over there. And one person's thinking about what they, they are going to do after church. Another person's thinking about what they had for breakfast this morning. And, and so even though... We know that, that, that unity is important. Still, there is a, a degree of difficulty in coming together like God really wants us to come together. Amen. We will likely never agree on everything. 
we will all differ in our knowledge of God. Amen. But, but Paul uh, said when Paul was talking about the unity of the faith, he describes it until we come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, every, every one of us has or should have a measuring stick in our life, and that measuring stick is Jesus Christ. And even though we are not always unified in, in our, our understanding of Jesus, and we're not always where we ought to be, and we're not always where we ought to be, and we're not like Jesus like we ought to be, we ought to always be unified or strive to be unified to say, we all want to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. We all agree that we want to be like Jesus. We may sometimes disagree on exactly what that is. We may disagree on how best to get there. We may disagree on our methods at some times, at some point in time. But when it all is said and done, I want to stand before him and hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I don't just want to stand before him by myself, but I want to stand before him with the church of the living God, with the bride of Christ, with souls that I have helped to get there and to be able to hear him say to them well done thou good and faithful servant I believe that if we can't be unified about anything else that's one thing that we can be unified about today hallelujah clap your hands under the Lord hallelujah we may disagree on some things today, but there's one thing that the apostle said in Ephesians that we can be in agreement on. There is just one body of Christ. There is just one spirit, the Holy Ghost. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. There is one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. That is a starting point. And if we can start from right there and say everything else we may they have difficulty understanding but let's start with the fact that there's one God let's start with the fact that there's one church one body of Christ if we'll start there he'll help us to get to the end point glory to God glory to God glory to God glory to God hallelujah come on somebody ought to give him some praise today I'm telling you what I feel right now. I'm feeling some unity in the spirit right now. Hey Amen. You may not think exactly like I think. You may not see it exactly like I think. But you know something we can say, hey brother, until we come to an understanding, take me by the hand and we're going to walk together and we're going to do our best for the kingdom of God and we're going to tell our brothers and our sisters everything that we know that will help them on the journey. And when they fall, we're going to pick them up. And when they stumble, we're going to give them assistance. Hallelujah. And when they need prayer we're going to pray for him why because we want to get to the same place we've got the same goal in mind we've got the same ideas about where we're going and one day if God wills we're going to make it together oh hallelujah 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 how do we work for unity of the spirit Paul told us some things in Ephesians he said forbearing one another with humility. That word forbearing, I had you, I told you what it meant and I had you say it with me, but that word forbearing means to sustain my brother and my sister. That word forbearing means to lift up my brother and my sister. That word forbearing means give them a helping hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. They're, they're maybe, maybe their understanding's kind of cloudy right now. Maybe they're, under, maybe they're going through a trial right now, Brother Ken, and they can't see clearly. Hallelujah. But we still got the same goals in mind. Maybe they're kind of feeling lost right now. But you know what David said? David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, he said, somebody's got to take me by the hand and lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When I don't want to go to the rock, somebody in the church has got to take me by the hand and say, listen, brother, you're going to the rock. We're going to pay a visit to the rock. I know you've got problems in your life. I know you've got struggles in your life. I know you've got disappointments in your life, but we're going to go to the rock together. Take me by the hand and let's go. 
He said, lift up your brother. Forbear your brother or your sister. When they don't see it just like you do, don't push them down. Don't destroy them. Don't spend all your time arguing with them. But he said, when they're struggling, forbear with them. Sustain them. Pick them up. Hallelujah. Sister Amanda and I were talking about this yesterday. Just yesterday we were talking about the fact that sometimes people in the church, you have to work with them for a while. Did you know that? I've known too many preachers and pastors. I'm just going to get real here for a second. But somebody comes into the church and they don't have an understanding that, that the pastor has. They don't see it like the pastor does. They don't live it like the pastor does. And the pastor says you hit the road because you're not welcome here. I'm not talking about people who are coming in trying to sow seeds of division. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who are struggling with understanding. I'm talking about people who are struggling with their where they are in the kingdom of God. I'm talking about people who are struggling with, with their development. And maybe God just haven't, hasn't given them the revelation that He has given you. You know what you need to do? You need to say, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to bear you up. I'm going to hold on to you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray with you. Because you, we you and I may not see it just right right now. But maybe down the road we'll come to an agreement. And even if we don't come to 100% agreement my desire is that one day we stand before the king of kings and the lord of lords and we'll understand it better by and by hallelujah and when we stand before him we'll all be in agreement then hallelujah we gotta pull them along gotta pull them along gotta pull them along you know another way he said that we Work, I'm talking about working, the hard work of unity. It's easy to divide people. It really is. You know, you know, Brother Curry, you know the reason? You know, I've been criticized in the past because discipling people is not easy. And I've been criticized by people who said, well, they don't act like I think they ought to act, look like I think they ought to look, live like I think they ought to live, and you need to get rid of them. I've even known people who talk about people who claim to have the Holy Ghost. They would say, oh, if you let that, that sinner in your church, they will contaminate everybody else. What kind of Holy Ghost do you have? That you can't have a sinner come into the house of God and sit on the pew next to you without it contaminating you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself if that's your attitude. You need to get enough of the Holy Ghost uh, that when the sinner comes in and they sit on the pew next to you, they feel something different. They see something different. They want what you've got. You're not going to go back out into what they've got. They want what you've got. I didn't mean to go down that path, but I'm feeling it now, so I might as well go down it. Oh, but pastor, if you let them hang around, it'll jump off on somebody else. And pretty, no, pretty soon the whole church will be worldly. Listen, the Holy Ghost that I have is my Holy Ghost. Jesus never... You know, when Jesus was walking and teaching and preaching, he didn't worry about, well, should I bring my disciples into this house where their sinner's going to be, where this woman with this, this cruise of oil is? Because if I, bring, if I bring my disciples in here, maybe one of them might get the wrong idea about this lady and might run off into the night with her somehow because she is, after all, a woman of ill repute. And I'm not sure I should have... No, no, no. Jesus didn't worry one bit about that because He was the Word manifest in the flesh. Hallelujah. He was the living Word of God and He was the Spirit of God manifest in the flesh. And He knew that what I've got in this house uh, is enough for my disciples. Uh, I don't have to worry about them running off with the woman. I don't have to worry about what's going through their minds uh, because there's enough of the Holy Ghost in this house to take care of that. <sighs> Clap your hands unto the Lord. Are y'all still with me? Hallelujah. 
Talking about working for unity. In Romans 15, 6 and 7. Romans 15, 6 and 7. The writer said that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore receive ye one another. As Christ also hath received us to the glory of God. You know what he was saying here? You let me tell you what a unifier is. You know what brings unity in the church? Even when we don't have the complete understanding of agreement. You know what brings unity? Worship. He said because after forbearing others, he said with, with one mind and one mouth you glorify God. This is why David said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You know what he's saying to us? He's saying, sister, we don't have to agree on everything to praise the Lord. All that's required is I need breath and you need breath. Hallelujah. We don't have to see eye to eye to worship the Lord. All that has to happen is you've got breath and I've got breath. If we've got breath, we can lift our hands. If we've got breath, we can give God glory. If we've got breath, we can give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise and worship are the greatest. Great unifiers. Hallelujah. God blesses our praise when we are unified because it's one of the few times that we put aside our petty differences and we said, I have come today to lift up the name of Jesus. I hadn't come to look at anybody else. I hadn't come to see what they're wearing. I haven't come to see what they're doing. I just came to lift the name of the Lord. And when you come to the house of God and you say, I came to lift up the name of Jesus, I don't care what anybody else is doing I don't care what anybody else is going to do God is going to step into that house when we are unified with one mind and one accord in giving him praise and giving him glory and he's going to come down and people are going to be healed and people are going to be set free and people are going to be delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost when we are unified in praise God commands the blessing now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place, Brother Pound, guess what? God said, that's just how I wanted it. One accord in one place. Hey Amen. They, you know what? Some of them came out of backgrounds that were Sadducees. Come, some of them came out of backgrounds that were Pharisees. Some of them came out of backgrounds they didn't know what kind of sea they were. Some of them came out of the background where they were on the Sea of Galilee. Amen. There were different ones that come from all different walks of life. Matthew was a tax collector. Peter, James, and John were fishermen. But when they went into the upper room and they lifted up their voices in praise and glory to God and they were in one mind in one accord in one place you know what the scripture said suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared in them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance when we're unified in praise God is going to pour out his spirit Hallelujah. Why don't we see more miracles? Why don't we see more people getting the Holy Ghost? Because we can't seem to get everything together and come together in one mind and one accord. We got too many distractions, and the devil has made it that way. He has designed it so that we are distracted. Because he fears a united church. Mm. How many praise and worship services do we waste trying to get everybody in the frame of worship? The third way we bring unity. Hallelujah. The first way was forbearing one another. The second way is through our worship, united in praise. The third way we bring unity is empathy. Paul said in Romans 12, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. 
be not wise in your own conceits. I don't have to agree with you on everything to care about you. I don't have to agree with you on everything to care about what you're going through. Amen. I don't have to agree. You know, when he says condescend to men of low estate. I know what he's trying to say there. But really, it's an indictment of the Corinthians. Or the Romans, rather. That Paul even has to say to them, condescend. To people that are in your mind lower than you. In your mind. Say that again, in your mind. They're lower than you. Because in God's economy, they're not lower than you. They mean just as much to him as you do. Amen. I love what the Apostle Peter had to say when the, the Jewish uh, the church council in the book of Acts was debating over whether God could save Gentiles or not. I love the way that Peter phrased his response to the, the leaders of the church. And he didn't say, I believe they can be saved just like us. He said, I believe we can be saved just like them. <laughs> he chose his words carefully. What he was saying is, God's already saved them. You can forget that ship has already sailed. I just hope that we can get there too. Praise God. But I don't have to agree with you to care about you and know and what you're going through and pray for you. That empathy is so important. But I'm going to say one last thing. I know it's a lot of scripture, but I'm going to read it quickly. It won't take me but a, mi- a minute to go through it. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 12 for me real quick. 1 Corinthians 12. I debated on splitting this up into two sermons. And I said, oh, well, why not? We'll just dump it all at one time. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Is everybody there? I'm going to skip around a little bit, so pay attention. He said, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, God gives it to us for our profit and also for the profit of the church. Say amen. Skipping down to verse 11, he goes over the the gifts of the spirit. Verse 11 says, but all these work of that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally. And you know that word severally means individually. God gives them to us as individuals as he will. Not as we will, but as he wills. For as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. But that sounds like Ephesians, doesn't it? There's one body and one spirit, even as you're called and one hope of your calling. He says, by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, whether we have all been made to drink into that one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Now hear this carefully, folks. Is it therefore not of the body? If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. As it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now they, are they many members, yet but one body. The eye cannot say, the eye cannot. Everybody say, the eye cannot. Say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have much, have more abundant comeliness. And if you don't believe that is true, you should be like me and have gout for a little while. And that big toe that you take for granted will become the center of your world for a few days. Where was I? Verse 24. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism, schism in the body, but that the, that means division, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or whether one or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And that word particular there means 
part of a whole. He is saying you are part of something much bigger than you. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps governments, diversities of tongues. In other words, God, I'm going to stop there. God has designed a structure to provide everything we need in a unified body. There are eyes, ears, a nose, hands, feet. But when a church is not unified, we don't have a healthy, functioning body. And instead what we have is a Frankenstein monster. When a church is not a healthy, not unified and not a healthy functioning body, you have a hand doing what a foot is supposed to do. And a foot doing what a hand is supposed to do. And an ear doing what an eye is supposed to do. And vice versa. Let me ask you this question. I'm, I'm closing here in just a minute. But I want, I, nothing I have said here today is more important than what I'm about to say right now. Who does the seeing in your life? Who does the hearing in your life? Who are the hands in your life? Now, before you criticize me, hear, hear this. I know that God is the ultimate source of all things. I get that. But God has designed a structure called the church. And he operates through his body, <clears throat> the church. This is why I'm, I'm really getting a revelation about this here more so I... I thought I really understood a lot of this, but God's helping my understanding even more. This is why James said, is there any sick among you? Notice James did not say, is there any sick among you? Don't worry about anybody else. Fall on your knees, call on the Lord and ask God to heal you. He said, is there any sick among you? Let him do what? For who? The elders of what? You mean the body? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And then he went on, and I, I preached, talked about this a couple of weeks ago on Thursday night. But then he goes on to say, Confess ye your faults one to another and pray for one another that what? That you may be healed. Here's what, I'm, what I want you to get out of this. Many are not receiving what they need today whether it is healing deliverance whatever because they are trying to do an end around on God's structure and hierarchy I knew it would get quiet I didn't know it would get that quiet but I knew it would get quiet there are too many people listen to me who want to bypass the church and go straight to God I know I'm making you uncomfortable now. Have you ever known anybody that, was, that, that you worked with that stepped out of the chain of command unjustified, unjustly, and it irritated you? Have you ever had anybody do that? Anybody went over your head for something, trying to embarrass you, trying to make you look bad? You ever had that happen before? Let me tell you what, what he thinks about the church. He paid for it with his own blood. And when you step out of God's hierarchy and God's chain of command, you are messing with the apple of his eye, his bride. Somebody said, but, I, but, but pastor, you don't understand. I don't trust. People say, I don't trust my brother or my sister. I don't trust their walk with God. 
I don't trust them enough to pray for me. I, that's why I need to just bypass them because I know all these people. I know they're all knuckleheads. I'm talking about how some people think. Worse yet, I know what they did last week. Oh, y'all really got quiet on me now. And our problem is, is that we say, I don't trust my brother or my sister. And that is why I feel the need to bypass them and go straight to God. I don't trust them to do what they are called to do. I don't trust the eye to be the eye. I don't trust the hands to be the hands. I don't trust the feet to be the feet. I don't trust the ears to be the ears. We wonder why we can't walk. What if I got out of bed every day and said, I don't trust my feet? What, what if that was our attitude? What we do is we think to ourselves, because I don't trust my brother, I don't trust my sister, I'm going to go around them because I think I can do it better or I'll just go straight to God. Listen, I know you're really getting quiet on me now, but that's all right. Let me tell you something. When Cornelius prayed to God, for, and the Bible said his prayers and his alms came up as a memorial before God. And so God sent an angel to Cornelius' household because Cornelius did not know any better. And God, said, God sent an angel to, and I'm paraphrasing, tell Cornelius, you have to go through the chain of command. What do you mean, Pastor? The angel said to Cornelius, I can't tell you how to be saved. I can't tell you the plan of salvation because God has given man dominion over the works of his hands. So what you got to do is you got to go find a man by the name of Peter and he will tell you what you've got to do. Cornelius, the angel couldn't tell Cornelius what to do. All the angel could do is say, there's the chain of command. Go follow. Listen, folks, the body, I'm talking about the body of Christ. It's built to last. Did you know, did you know your body's built to last too? <clears throat> I know you may not feel like it right now. Every year I get a year older, I feel less like it. But it's lasted me this long. It's done me pretty good. Hear me out, though. What, one of the great things about the body is, you know how, how often... A cell will fail here or there or somewhere. So oftentimes, one little part of the body is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. As I'm speaking right now, my right toe is rebelling against me to a certain degree. But you know what? That didn't stop me from getting up and coming to church today. Because here's the thing. Even though that one part of the body is in rebellion right now, even though that one part of the body is not functioning like it's supposed to function right now, I've got enough faith and confidence in the rest of the body that we can make it through this day. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when it comes to the body of Christ, hallelujah, God designed it in such a way that even when part of it, a part of it fails, it's still going to keep functioning. Praise God. Even when a part of it is not carrying its weight, it's still going to work. Amen. If God has to, He will step in and intervene and make sure that it works. But listen, you can trust the body. You can trust the church. You can trust your brother. You can trust your sister. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm closing. Sister Mandy, you can come on. I, I struggled with this. God gave me the first part, the part about the unity. All week long, he's been just running that through my spirit. And I'm the kind of person, you know, God doesn't owe us explanations, but I'm the kind of person that I like to know why. And, I, you know, I, I kept saying, well, Lord, I'll preach it. I really don't understand why, but I'll preach it anyway. But I said, I would really like to know how this is, what, what has this got to do with, with your people today here, 2023? I'm talking about the first part, the, the unity part. And then the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, my people are not receiving what they need because they don't trust the body. 
and he cares enough about us that he said Paul said he sent apostles prophets pastors teachers evangelists but it's not just my job is to tell you that God cares about you and to tell you how to fix the problem but I'm not by any stretch of the imagination the entire body and neither are you and God does not operate just through this pulpit you know who you know who he operates through these hands right here these hands right here what what are you saying what are you saying pastor I'm saying your healing could be in these hands right here but, 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 but I, I just, I'll go on a 10 day fast and I'll pray and seek God and God will give me my healing that way he will not if his healing is in these hands right here your answer could be in the lips of this man right here the word of encouragement that you need today to help you deal with that situation tomorrow could be in her lips right there. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? We sit back, we've got this idea that we're supposed to sit back in church and expect somebody to get behind the pulpit and be the eyes, ears, nose, throat, mouth, feet, hands, everything. That is not what the apostle said. He said, we're all part of the body. I preached a message many years ago. The title of the message was, Never Send a Man to Do a Boy's Job. Where Jesus fed the 5,000 and they brought to him a lad. They said, here's a lad. So he's the only one that brought any lunch today. I wonder where everybody, what everybody else was thinking. 5,000 people, not one person thought to bring a lunch. But the little boy had a lunch. And Jesus said, Brother Joe, that's all I need. All I needed was a young man to make himself available. I wonder if they had to fight the kid for his lunch. I don't feel like they did. But the fact of the matter is, he yielded himself. And God says, this is who the miracle comes through today. And I have had times in my own life, and I hope you have too, where I've had little children in the church that I needed a healing touch from God. And God has spoken to me and said, get that child over there to lay hands on you and pray for you right now. Why, Lord? Because they're still young enough to have faith. They haven't had it programmed out of them yet. And I've gone over, Brother Travis, and I've had that child pray for me, and God has healed me instantly. And I, I could have went on some long fast, or some, I'm not against fasting. You know, we got one coming up soon. But what I'm trying to tell you is God ha- put a structure in place for a reason. We need each other. And if you look down your nose at anybody that is part of the body, You risk looking down your nose at your own answer, at your own healing, at your own deliverance, because that could be the person that God chose. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? What if? When the angel spoke to Cornelius, what if Cornelius had said, Peter? Who is Peter? Does anybody know Peter? I am, after all, a centurion in the Roman army. If I'm going to talk to anybody, it's going to be a high-ranking official. Tell you what, go send for the high priest. Wouldn't work, would it? Go send for, go send for some prophet. 
Go send for somebody that, that, that everybody's heard of. Go send for some big time television evangelist. Go send for somebody that everybody knows. He never would have gotten what he needed. Because the angel said, on this day, that job has been assigned to Peter. And Peter was the one. Which, by the way, I might add, Peter didn't even know it at first. Peter's like... Stuff in his face and sleeping. And God had to send him a vision down three times. And Peter's like, what, 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 me? Boy, that's just like us, isn't it? The Holy Ghost tells you to go pray for somebody. And you're like, me? I'm not the most spiritual. That's the problem. You're saying I'm not the most spiritual person in the building. He's not looking for the most spiritual person in the building. He's looking for people who say, I'll be used. I'm willing I'm willing, if we'll listen, would you stand with me today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you need from God today? Do you need healing? Do you need an answer to prayer? Do you need a deliverance? Well, I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. Listen, I'm not, I'm not against... I know, I know we call for the elders to pray for the sick and all of that, and, and we, we should, and that's biblical, and that's obedience. But I feel like today God wants to get the whole body involved. He wants to get the whole body. He said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. If you need healing, if you need a deliverance, if you need an answer in your life today, if you've got a problem you're dealing with, I wonder who, who I feel the Holy Ghost. I wonder who trusts the body enough to come. Is there anybody that trusts the body enough to make your way down here and say, Lord, I'm not going to put any restrictions on who can pray for me. I'm not going to make any preconceived judgments about who they are what they're doing whether they have a right or not I just want them to be obedient to the Holy Ghost now if you don't if you're not one of the ones that has come down here I want you to pray right now that God would put one of these people on your heart come on I want everybody in here that's, that's Holy Ghost filled everybody in here that's a child of God I want you to come down here and pray for somebody I want you to let the Lord speak to you right now about who you're going to pray for. Come on, are we going to trust the body? Are we going to trust the body? Are we going to trust the body? I'm telling you what, some chains are being broken right now. Some chains are being broken right now. Some chains are being broken right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. That's it. Come on, let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord speak to you about who you're going to pray for. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. You're my brother. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. You can trust the body. You can trust the body. You can trust the body. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, there's some effectual, fervent prayer going up right now. Somebody's getting their need answered. Somebody's getting their prayer answered. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's no foe that can defeat us. Walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. Hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Come on. Come on, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. There's no foe that can defeat. Hallelujah. 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 brother you're my sister so take me by the hand together we will work until he comes there's no foe that can defeat us we're walking side by side oh hallelujah hallelujah We'll stand, brother, you're my sister, take me by the hand, oh, together, yes, come on, hallelujah, 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 oh, hallelujah, 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 long as there is love, we stand oh yes praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah